Let's have a look round and uh, see what we're up to. You can see the, uh, the frost has finally hit the peas. I didn't bank on getting a crop because we were second early and it went in quite late. You know, I've had a few freshies while I've been here, just picking them off and eating them. None of them, I've taken none home at all, so uh, they'll have to go. Um, I put some endive in, they are growing, but they're, they're a bit small. Um, if I put a cloche over them, fair enough, but I, I want to just cover this bed up for winter now. You know, because the weather's supposed to get bad. So, you know, let's say about snow and everything. So, I'm going to kind of wind it down so I don't really have to come here for a while. Um, garlic and my onions. I'm going to take this net off and transfer one of these hoop nets over the top. Um, regard uh, a comment I made to, to Dan from the allotment dairy. Um, he uses it but they've collapsed on him. Yet yeah, I will say with a lot of snow on them they will collapse. There is ways you could probably brace them by putting a few you know, vertical drops down and, and fixing them at this point. But when they get a lot of snow on them they're just going to collapse. So um, I'm only going to have that net and this net up. If I get up to strength and I will, if they collapse, they collapse. I just, I don't want to be coming here in the middle of winter. It's covered in snow and, you know, I've got other things I can be getting on with. So I'm traipsing about today. It's all, it's not waterlogged, but it's, you can see it's uh, pretty sloppy. Them lettuce, they're going to go. I'm going to cover that part of the bed. Uh, I might put my leeks there next year, I don't know, or I might do another raised box and try my carrots that way, I don't know. I've not thought about next year properly yet. Same with these lettuce, I might. I'll take some for my tortoise and then the rest I'll, uh, I'll compost, which will, will be in another subject in this video later on. Same with this bed, take what I can out of these brassicas, clear the bed, and uh, top it up, cover it over. So I'll only hopefully have this bed open. And this bed open. The other two, of these big ones, will be shut down for, till next year. Them two over there, obviously they won't be getting uncovered till next year. Um, let's see, uh, the asparagus bed, as I left it really, it looks really really wet. Um, so I've just put my uh, pH and moisture gauge in, run it down, uh, it's at moisture's level, I don't know if you can see, right to the far side to the right is wet so it's, it's kind of in the green it's moist and that's about five inches down but the further I go it'll be wet that's about how deep down my crowns are probably about five inch uh, strawberries I'll be coming down here again at some point I'm going to take all the dead leaves off these tidy them up a bit for winter so many other strawberries raspberries I'm going to have a crop today I think I'm just going to leave them you know, um, and then come back and prune them sometime. If, if I come up in the summer, I'll take them. I've not been up here for two weeks, so um, there's loads of fruit on them. Some's gone off, but uh, so it's just been too wet. I've been too busy. So um, green manure, it's coming through a bit slow. So see what happens. I might end up just getting a sheet and covering this over. I don't know. It's one of them things. If we get a good frost. And the ground's fairly hard I'll, I can, and you can walk about on it then uh, I'll cover it all but if it's soft and sloppy like this I don't want to be coming up here and walking about even, worms are trying to get out of the ground when it's that wet plenty of worms here but, uh, I want to head for higher ground so I need to get into my raised beds and do the business I need to do a little bit of weeding on these as I say the bed's been great for, for weeding this year hardly anything not been weeded, I don't know, it must be, I don't know, seven weeks, six, seven weeks, something like that, just after I took my onions out really, we're going back to like July, August, so I can't remember, I've not really kept a diary of anything this year, just, if I need some information, I just look back on my videos, so that's about, uh, just a bit of a walk around update, I say it's that time of year, you need to get everything cleared, and then, um, do the work in, in the house at home to uh, plan for next year, catch up on the uh, indoor jobs. Uh, but spring will soon be here, you know, I mean, start sowing seeds so just after Christmas, so you need to get all this festive season out of the way, isn't it? 
you know, blueberries, they've shed most of the greenery now. You know, so uh, I need to think about a net for all of them next year, like fruit cage. You know, eventually I'll have to move them because of the size they're going to get and access on things. That's a little update walk around. Um, so I'll, uh, I'll get them with a few bits and add to this video. I had a, a comment on uh, YouTube, I can't remember what, what, which video it was on uh, but it's just come to me now about um, what p-netting I use for my supports I don't use that green nylon stuff that's cheap because it does me head in trying to get it tight and laid out it just seems to just come when you unravel it it just ends up a big knotted mess unless if you can try and install it in a framework at home and get it up here I wouldn't bother with it so I found this stuff on, uh, I think it was eBay. It's, you buy it per meter, it's, it's it's pretty cheap. And it comes in, uh, I'm say two meter wide. That's six foot roughly. And you buy it meter of length. Now it is, it's a bit like gold netting, I suppose. It's, uh, it's string. And when they send it, it has these lovely little ropes tied to the corners, so you know where the corner is, so you know messing about I mean I'll reuse this next year I might order some more as well uh, but it's been good for peas let's say I do a side support each end one in the center and I do a top brace because the um, the sides will pull in because obviously when you get a crop of peas on it it's going to be some weight in this and it, the net will just pull down so having something across the top try and get it a bit higher than what your peas are going to go but I mean I made that mistake over there the peas got a lot higher so I had to put strings around the tops of them so uh, lesson learnt for next year um, but usually most of them only need to be really um, four or five foot high um, so that's how I basically do my pea supports uh, this is uh, regarding a video that Aaron from Aaron's allotment um, but he was doing some compost and he put some because he said his missus was addicted to eBay many people are um, about his compost bin them, them black sort of compost bins are okay but they um, they can suffocate everything in there because you just fill them up and you have to wait for ages you know it's okay if you, if you don't want your compost quick that's perfectly fine just chuck everything in there personally I'd use them for things like uh, Things like leaf mould, if you just want to put it in there and forget about it, you know, for a couple of years, or your compost when it's near enough at its final stage, it's ready to use, transfer it into there because it's shrunk down a lot. So, if you get that full of re ready compost, you know, the worms can still come into it and keep it moving around and mixed up, and you don't have to start turning it because you can't, you can't really get a spade in to give them a good turning. Um, the, but the other option you've got is uh, fill the bin up and then every couple of weeks lift the bin off the pile um, it should be hard work when it starts getting finer it kind of pins it down to the ground a bit so um, lift it off the pile and then turn the pile back into it you can drill it with a series of holes I'd say probably you know um, half inch 15 millimeter holes or one and a half centimeter holes um, all over it to let air in it um, you could put pipes through it that are drilled to allow air into it but for ease and cheapness um, construct one out of timber pallets is a very very easy option now I know Aaron can get all of some pallets because he, he said um, there was a place near his allotment not everyone can get pallets I know um, but if you can they're a, a good asset on an allotment you can make a fence out of them you know you can just stand them next to each other and whack a post at each end make yourself a fence but, um, right so I'm not gonna empty all my stuff out of the way so you can see me compost but I'll just show you as best as I can so uh, we'll have a look at that so these are two spare pallets I have so obviously there's a gap in here now personally if I was going to use this as a compost I would have 
this nice flat side on the inside. Right, so that's the inside of you, and that would be on the outside. So if you wanted to make a bay, you'd have one across the back, like that, and then you'd have another pallet at the side here. You can screw them, nail them, or just whack posts in them. You don't have to cover them, you can put another pallet on top and put something over that to cover it with. All I have on mine is a tarpaulin that's flattened across the back, and then I've got a half log fence post to keep it over the front. It blows off sometimes, but it doesn't because at the moment because I've got this thing on here. Now, this is me uh, sort of build up and uh, my flat pack compost to this. You have to have a look in one of my earlier videos on composting and you'll see how I use this thing. Very handy. Uh, so, I'll move this bucket because I've shoved my bench here because it's out in the way. Right, now I line my compost bay with weed membrane to try and deter things from coming in like mice and things like that. Um, and obviously you've got a two bay one like this, like you can transfer when stuff's broken down from one side into the other side. A three stage one's the best because you can sort of like say new, you know, turned and then the final turn if you know what I mean. Um, if you want to do a bay like this, obviously you'd need two pallets for the back, unless if you can get a big long eight foot by four foot one, uh, and then your three for your partitions. Now you can, what I have, I, I, it's a bit hard to see because there's stuff in the way. Try and get it so you can slide pieces of wood inside it. So as your compost bin fills, you can slide horizontal pieces inside it. The way the hot compost will keep them forward, and that will hold the compost back. So the more you fill it, you just add more sort of slats of wood to it, if you know what I mean. <coughs> um, however you uh, want to do that, that's um, that's up to you. So you don't have to have a lid on it, you don't have to have a front on it, you just have it in an open bay. So, um, use a tarpaulin, plank of wood, or carpet. It's just, you don't want it getting completely soaked, because um, it'll keep it cold. You know, you need it to warm up, so. Um, regarding um, what sort of stuff to put in it, obviously greens and browns, i.e. grass, um, lettuce heads, um, weeds, brands, no seeds on them, um, you know, stuff like dandelion leaves, um, you can put them in, dock leaf, you know, the actual leaf, leaf itself, but don't put the root in, roots you can drown them. Just be careful what you put in it regarding seed wise because if you can't get it hot them seeds are going to germinate wherever you put it. You're not going to get every seed out but you know you can try and at least uh, have the upper hand a bit. Straw, hay, their browns, leaf, you know um, fallen uh, leaves, bag them up. They can go in as a brown. Uh, I'm going to show you another way um, to use leaves after in another, another bit of the video. Um, so you need to, if you're going to put paper in and things like that in, the, the more you can shred the stuff up before it goes in, the faster it will break down. Now if you're going to put put it in in layers, um, there's, there's loads of information on the internet about quantities, and, but I'd say a general rule of thumb, if you can get something like a, I don't know, um, two parts, brown to one part green you'll not be far off you've got a little bit more of the greens but just watch how you add it and if you're going to do it in layers I'd say for every three inch layer put a one inch layer of grass on it if you put a big thick layer of grass on it it's going to stink it's going to rot down in a big sort of what's it called now anaerobic compost it's called it blankets and it will absolutely stink so if you're going to add a big load at once and you don't want to do it in layers just shove it all in a pile and mix the whole thing together if you mix it all together you can put more greens in the more greens will speed it up a little bit because the greens are the nitrogen um, everything has a nitrogen carbon ratio some more than others cardboard something like 200 parts carbon to one part nitrogen where hay is something like 20 wood something stupid like 10,000 something like that so wood takes a long time um, quicker if you chip it all up 
this is why hence why I get me um, when I get me collect me over leaves I blitz them up and if you can get some grass clippings in with that I'm fine but if you can't add some greens if you're a bit short on greens get some sulfate of ammonia scatter that on it mix it but sulfate of ammonia if you put too much on it worms don't like it because it burns them so it's okay on a new pile and then it'll gradually weaken as it gets diluted and absorbed into all the carbon then the uh, microorganisms will start to warm the pile up and get active and when it's on its final stages the worms will come in and do the rest for you uh, one more ingredient you can use for nitrogen and that's your own wee sounds disgusting but it's free and uh, I don't mean neat you know um, some in a watering can diluted I don't know one part wee to, to 20 parts water something like that because you know human urine is, is very high in nitrogen uh, make sure you compost it well of course um, what else is there uh, I think that's about it on composting if you, if you stop regarding ratios you know um, if you're going to put it in wheelbarrows you know and mix it get two wheelbarrows full of brown stuff like you know go on the internet and find a list of what can be classed as browns um, to one wheelbarrow of green and that will be uh, two parts brown to one part green ratio mix it all up and you'll not be far wrong with that roll it around rot down okay um, I say um, just watch it with seeds that you put in it ideally if it's covered up you know it's not open to the elements and um, this time of year it's colder so the bigger the heap you can make and you can kind of insulate it it will still rot down even in sub-zero temperatures slower yeah but it will get still get hot you know you can still get a pile up to 60 70 degrees this time of year if you put the ingredients in right and you get the air flow in there i don't think you want to be coming up in a blistering cold morning but when you start working the pile it is warm because it's blasting steam off into your face so uh, right we'll get on with some jobs and I'll put bits on speak to you in a bit ok as usual uh, the light's starting to fade now um, well, got another hour yet before it's gone but I've got to cart some stuff back to the van so I'm not going to push my luck today um, so I'm going to come down in a few days hopefully I'm just not chucking it now and try and uh, have a good day on here. Uh, we'll have a look what, what I've got done so far today. Um, well, basically, brassica bed here where my sprouts are. I just weeded this side. I've got rid of two of the Brussels sprout plants because they were covered in aphids still. So I thought I'll just get them out. I've weeded this side. There's a few of the Lola Rossi left in there. Uh, let's say I've still to do this bed yet. I might pull some of the greens today just to take home um, just basically going around picking bits of wood up I'll have to make a, a bit of a wood pile get it cleaned up so I can store it for over over winter you don't want to burn it all because it's handy for weighting uh, sheets down with empty cans of energy drink all over the place I put them on top of canes to uh, you know deter stuff because they rattle about so this bed not touched it yet, it's where my peas are. I'm just gonna harvest some more of my uh, endive or endive, what you wanna whatever you, when you don't speak, whatever you wanna call it. Um also done. I've had a bit of a towel, stacked some bits of wood up on there. Um I might burn some of it but it's not too bad just for weight and sheets down with like I say. That's just some uh, greenery I've ripped up, that'll become my greens which I'll explain in the next video well you'll see in the next video it's going to be too long to update as one video this so I'll put a, like a second part to this up um, where I've stood now was my sweet corn and some lettuce all gone um, I think I got a couple off my sweet corn that was about it but, uh, give them to give them away my peas might try and pick some off them but I 
I'm not, I'm not too fussed to be honest. I've still got some left from my main crop that I um, harvested. Um, so I just want to get cleared up now because bad weather's coming. We we'll have this last bit of time now. Pick some raspberries, pull some lettuce and some cabbage. Um, bag me, uh, take me bags of sacks of spuds out of the shed. Um, bad weather's coming, so I don't want them freezing and going rotten. Um, so I think that's about it. Might be a bit boring this video, but it's just a bit of a, a winter shutdown video. Um, so like I say, I'm here. It's Friday today, so I'm up, hoping to come on Sunday. And have a good day here. And if I can get everything done, I've known to come back for a quite a long time, really. That's the plan anyway. Um, well, it's weather permitting. You always want to get loads done, but stuff holds up and it's just so sloppy here. I've got a lot of bags of stuff here. These are all uh, just chopped leaves. These are the old compost that I had for me. Spuds in pots. Still got bags of leaf mulch from last year here and bags of soil. I need to just sort through it all. Um, just one job you got to do get cleaned up. When you start leaving too much knocking around, you just invite cubby holes for slugs and snails to sit it, you know, sit winter out. So, from me in a very wet, soggy allotment, take care, and I'll see you in the next video.